Yes, have you got it now? Yes, okay. <clears throat> Okay, let's start, guys. Okay, so uh, last week, right, we have uh, we have completed our uh, Docker and Docker Swarm, right? Uh, this session, right, we're going to uh, start with uh, initially first one hour, right? I'm planning to implement or uh, one one and a half hour. I'm going to show you how Kubernetes can be installed. So it's like it's not going to deep dive into Kubernetes, guys, but I want to show you the difference between uh how exactly docker swarm as well as uh, kubernetes will be so anyway i'm planning to start a new kubernetes session which i let you know uh it was long pending actually but i'm not getting time but it's a uh, completely a different course for that because it's kubernetes is a very big vast topic uh which requires a separate course for that one i can't really include in this one so but you should understand how exactly the look and feel of kubernetes so initially what we're going to do is let's discuss about uh, what is the architecture of the kubernetes uh, when compared to docker swarm and then we also discuss about how you can implement the kubernetes on aws infrastructure and i'm going to run a basic structures like pods deployments and services how you expose the service how you connect all these things okay all right so first thing is and we, we know we know what is a docker swarm see uh, docker swarm we already seen it kubernetes remains the same but let me tell you uh, Kubernetes is a different guys totally different when compared to docker swarm. Uh, it is more mature product when compared to docker swarm docker swarm is good But what is happening is when it comes to decoupling of things and uh, uh, the uh, the agility you have in in Kubernetes right. It's 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 uh, easy when compared to docker swarm for example imagine See, I, I in Docker Swarm, right? I can't really create a container and convert that into a service and then uh, uh, expose that one. All this is not possible. So what you need to do, if you want to create a replicas, right? What you need to do is first you need to directly create a service, uh, a service in uh, Docker Swarm, right? So what what is happening is in Docker Swarm. Let me show you the diagram. So this is imagine this is the Docker Swarm, and I'm going to say this is the worker node. So worker hyphen node hyphen one. This is worker node uh, two, and finally this is basically the worker node three. Worker node one, worker node two, and worker node three. Now in and uh, this is actually managed by Docker Swarm. Okay, so just imagine this is a uh, Docker Swarm manager. Docker Swarm Manager basically right so what will happen when you create a service basically what it is happening you when you when you create docker service create hyphen hyphen replicas and everything so if I create a, a command something like this to make you understand right so docker I need to give docker service create hyphen hyphen name is equal to uh, service one and I gave like a, a hyphen P is equal to 8000 is to 80 hyphen hyphen replicas uh, replicas a is equal to three and then uh, somewhere like uh, Sri Harsha V some image image dot version one something like this I give you'll get it now imagine is it possible to create separately a container okay and can I can I actually convert that existing container into a service? No, it is not possible But when when you go to the kubernetes what you can do is first you can create uh, if you want to uh, Create a container we call it as a pod or you can also a set of containers called as deployments uh, Which has replica sets so where you can have some three replicas and then I can actually expose it basically which is a service uh, Exposed with service. So all these things are actually separate so it's not like a, you need you need to you need to interconnect everything so everything is create can be created separately and then can be attached it separately so what will happen one thing and i observed in kubernetes guys a personal opinion so one thing i observed in kubernetes is everything is loosely coupled it's not like tightly coupled loosely coupled that means what i'm trying to say is let me show it to you so what are the different things if you say okay not this one let me take a different color okay let's take a blue so you can you can either take pods you can take deployments you can take services 
you can take uh, you, you you can take like uh, uh, volumes and you can take like uh, persistent volume it's both are same by the way persistent volume claims uh, for the storage you can uh, take like uh, roles and you have cluster roles and binding of the roles with the users which is uh, uh, cluster role binding okay we have again the uh, helm is different actually so what else is there so everything uh, you say networks by the way everything is uh, loosely coupled guys so what you can do you can actually create a manifest or resource definition which is a yaml file which yaml file and put everything inside this one you can put everything inside this one and uh, you can deploy it and it will get deployed totally okay of course you 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 we have that even in docker service as a compose file also but what i observed is so for example as an example i can't really have a service and later expose that service so during the creation of the service itself you can expose it actually okay so that that is a problem i can see and moreover uh, uh kubernetes is more mature product guys it was been used in production from a long time actually so when compared to docker swarm is good docker swarm is uh, easy and sweet and uh, but but what will happen is when it got enterprise level right uh, kubernetes is heavily used so it is it is very much important coming next your next stop is once you complete your aws azure and devops the next stop is you need to talk about kubernetes learn uh, about uh, python and all these things okay now here from the management point of view this is the same instead of docker swarm manager what we'll have is basically so kubernetes api server you'll have kubernetes are simply called as k8s api server so what will happen so this api server has continuously connected to all the worker nodes you can call this nodes as well and if you are giving some inputs right earlier what we used to do is we either from jenkins we can send our uh, files to uh, fi copy the files to master and execute there or here what you can do is you can let me move this a little bit next uh, left side okay so one of one more advantage what you can have is you really don't need to log into the api server and run it actually most probably in docker server or docker swarm what we are doing if you are using uh, if you if you need to run some compose files and everything we need to copy that to a docker swarm and run it but it's not mandatory you what you can do is you can basically imagine you have your laptop here if you have a laptop here what you can do you can have all your manifest okay uh, what i can say like uh, like uh, ks manifest manifest files so what i can do i can basically directly connect from here and talk to the api server directly so what will happen if i do that so i can i can apply this one it will go to the cube api server and cube api server can actually connect to the worker nodes and deploy your total application this is what going to happen so before going to deploy into the uh, cube uh, qk okay, test all this uh, all this uh, kubernetes right first we need to understand uh, the architecture architecture is very very important guys so it is little complicated when compared to docker swarm so what i do is also kubernetes architecture and there should be a picture actually let me see if i come down where is it okay it's not there okay let me do one thing i think kubernetes components i'll go yeah this is the one okay so what i'll do is uh view image if i go here now this is the image guys totally so if you see uh, the overall architecture so on the left side you have basically the kubernetes control plane if you say control plane all the management activities will be performed on the kubernetes control plane so on the right side you have a data this is actually kubernetes nodes is there right it is actually called as uh, sometimes you will see like minions actually minions is the old old term we used to that one but right now we call it as nodes this is the other name we need to give is this is basically data plane so actually where data plane means where actually the applications run and everything left side it is a control plane now first we need to discuss about the architecture on the left side so if you see 
now there are different components here guys if you see there are different components here so we have cube api server which is the major important thing because uh, we are not going to talk to anything directly in the control pane we are not going to talk to cube controller cloud control nothing or we are not going to talk uh, directly to the nodes we always always here one of the step it is missing is your man from the your management you always talk to the cube api server that is where you're going to send your manifest files uh, or, or you can say like the yaml files where uh, what is activity whether you want to create a container or deployment or or you, you want to deploy a service everything whatever it is you're going to talk to your api server directly now the things the the components which are supporting uh, this cube api server is hcd database cube scheduler cube control manager and cloud uh, control manager so everything has a predefined work to do here so cube api server is simply there so to send your a uh, you send your all your manifest to the that api server this is not there in uh, docker swarm guys because you need to if you want to execute something uh, for example last time we have executed the docker swarm the voting app right what we did we have copied our files to the docker swarm and then we have executed there right similarly i i don't need to do that one i really don't need to apply it like that so what you can do i can actually have my all my yaml files in my local laptop but when applying i can say like use something called as cube ctl cube control and i'm going to apply that one so that that particular yaml file content will be sent to the api server as a api request and then it will take the activity so that is one thing i can see advantage when compared to the docker compose maybe some people has find out a way in order to without copying and run it out but that's that's at least uh, that is my knowledge okay now you have the cube api server this is the uh, this is where actually you can you, you can actually talk to your cluster without cube api server you can't really talk to anything else so now here there are different components now what will happen is whenever you actually send a request right so that uh, the cube uh, the cube api server saves the data into the hc hcd database so you see this this is a hcd database this is actually key value a key value per database which actually they call it as a raft uh, raft algorithm actually i think we discussed about the raft algorithm right consensus algorithm which is that means agreement algorithm if you are using like because we have multiple masters in the control base not like cubase there is only one you can have multiple masters actually so all the data right will be saved here so let's discuss about the individual components so i'll go here okay so if you see if you come down you have different options so first is cube api server guys the cube api server is the component of kubernetes control point that exposes your kubernetes api so the api server is a front end for your kubernetes control plane that's that is where you're going to in interact the main component of the cube api server is uh, kubernetes api server is cube api server the cube api server is designed to scale horizontally that means you can add additional masters actually it scales by deploying more masters that is what it is saying more instances you can run several instances of cube api server and balance the traffic now in in the docker swarm case what will happening you can't you can have one three and five okay here also you can have but you can have many there is no limit actually here you can have many more but in swarm it is max of five so this is the this is the major uh, you can lay like uh, the, the front door for coming into the uh, kubernetes cluster after that you have hcd which is a database guys so consistent and highly available key uh, value store used kvn to backing all cluster data if i say cluster data it, it has details of the nodes it, it has details of the what is the cpu memory how many containers are running how many uh, nodes are running all the details when you when you try to deploy some pod right what are the what are the details of the pod what is ip addresses of the pod every every minute detail will be saved in the hcd cluster and it is very very highly available because it use a raft algorithm at the back end so if your kubernetes cluster uses hcd as its back store make sure you back up of those data no problem so next is next is cube scheduler guys okay now so you need to understand what exactly happening at the back end one minute so what is exactly happening at the back end now uh when you deploy when you deploy a kubernetes uh, uh manifest or i can say like uh, 
a service or a pod right or resource definition you can call it as so right now by the way the, the latest version is 1.17 guys kubernetes okay one four from 1.3 right now it is 1.17 now easy way of deploying of kubernetes is if you want a hardware right you can deploy meshes and do it or easy I means a little bit easy using cops kubernetes operations but more easy is you can deploy the aks as well as you can deploy the google google uh, in the google cloud you can deploy it here you have eks in aws but uh, i'm yet to check that one okay why it is shutting now oh, okay give me one minute guys i made a mistake i thought of i changed the schedule but looks like just 10 45 only then you should not okay so give me one minute guys what has happened is is it rebooting or something or what i have a schedule uh, 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 my stupidity okay fine no issues give me give me i'm just starting it out No issue. So let me share this screen actually before it comes. Okay. So what we'll say is we have Kubernetes components. So what happened is if you see, uh, this is basically this is what happened. I recently changed it because I I'm keep forgetting this one. So it's shut down by this one. Okay, it's okay. So once it comes i'm going to start it is still deallocating okay no worries we're going to talk about kubernetes components actually so the next one is uh, this is one right so i'll say uh, copy image location and i'm going to open in a new one this is the one okay right so next thing we need to talk is see when you when when i have this management server here so let me put like this i have the management server why i'm not getting the i should get the pencil so anyway so i'm going to copy this image Okay, so what I'm trying to say is I have my management Management here, so I'm going to say like I have my all my manifest here. So I'm going to say uh, management uh, desktop or laptop Now what I'm planning to do here is now I have my manifest so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send Apply this to one using kubectl. I'm going to apply to this one when I apply the kubectl to this one What will happen is the traffic right whatever the traffic you are able uh, Sorry, whatever the inputs you gave it will go to the cube api server and get processed and the outputs will be saved into the ECT at CD cluster basically so whatever the inputs are going to save and then what cube api server will do is because imagine I said that I want some uh, uh, I want some like a three uh, three pods actually or three containers actually it's called as pods actually but I'm going to explain later imagine for namesake imagine it is three containers actually so what will happen so here the cube scheduler is responsible for keep checking out if any new things are coming up so if I go back here so if I come down see cube scheduler the control plane component that watches for newly created pods and uh, with no assigned node and selects a node and run off them so what will happen is you have you have told that say okay i required three pods and i have uh, i have used the command the command uh, looks something different uh, let me start this machine so how much time you'll get deal deallocated actually <laughs> funny anyway so so it will be like this for example i say q 